strength, longevity, flexibility, and durability. This is the winning combination that makes up the Conklin High Crown Single Ply Roofing System. This is the durable team that gives you the edge over the most demanding roofing needs. Made with DuPont Hypalon, a synthetic rubber, the High Crown system is weather and fire resistant, highly reflective, and lightweight. The ideal system for new construction and re-roof applications. In the next 20 minutes, we'll walk you through the entire installation process, including roof preparation, membrane installation, and seaming procedures. If you have any specific questions on any items not covered in this video, please consult the product specification guide, your local representative, or the Conklin Technical Department. By following these steps, you'll deliver a quality project your customer will be satisfied with. Before applying any roofing materials, ask yourself if the roof is completely dry. Check the substrate. Is it structurally sound, solid, clean, and free from ice and snow? For best results, use a dry method which guards against drainage problems. This often occurs when water is used to clean a flat roof. Use a sweeper or power blower to make sure the surface has no grease, dirt, loose gravel, or other debris. However, high pressure water can be used to clean the surface if it will not damage the building or its contents. The high crown system can be installed directly over plywood, flake board, oriented strand board, and approved board stock insulation. The high crown sheet membrane cannot be directly applied to a built up roof or concrete roof. A divorcing material such as board insulation, plywood, or approved slip sheet must be used in these circumstances. When using board stock insulation, remember that it must be secured to the roof or roof deck in accordance with the manufacturer's specification. Make sure to use an appropriate amount of fasteners or adhesives for your application. When fastening the board stock, use a fastener in each corner. With 4 by 8 foot sheets, an additional fastener should be positioned in the center. Five fasteners are the minimum allowable. Note that a 3 inch plate is the minimum allowed by factory mutual wind uplift standards. Remember that the fastening system must be approved according to the factory mutual standards and it must be Conklin approved. Depending on the roof height and surrounding terrain, additional fasteners may be required. Taking the time to plan the roof application in advance makes the process more efficient and cost effective. Make sure you have all necessary tools, equipment, and roofing system components on hand and staged properly from the beginning. And don't forget the safety aspect of the job. Always consult your local OSHA office for specific requirements in your area. Prior to membrane installation, properly treated nailers should be installed around the perimeter and anywhere else deemed necessary. A special treatment of expansion joints and all the penetration should be completed before attempting to install the roofing membrane. Make sure the laying and securing insulation does not proceed so far in advance of the installing of the Hypalon sheet that the insulation remains exposed at the end of the day's work. Take note, one side of the Hypalon roll has a sealed edge where the scrim stops short of the edge of the Hypalon sheet. This is what is referred to as a salvage edge. When rolling out the sheets, remember this edge needs to be the one that overlaps the previously rolled sheet. The first sheet of membrane should be laid and installed with extreme care, as all other sheets will be aligned from it. When positioning the roofing membrane, remember to take into consideration the slope of the roof. Note that all roofs must have a minimum slope of a quarter inch per square foot for proper drainage. In some circumstances, it may be necessary to install tapered insulation to achieve positive drainage. Work should begin at the lowest point of the roof to ensure waterproof overlaps. Beginning at the lowest point will prevent direct exposure of the overlaps to the roof's drainage paths. If you are working on a roof with a severe slope, for safety reasons and easier application, Lay out the sheets parallel to the slope of the roof. When installing the membrane around the perimeter of the roof, it is preferable to use half sheets. This readily meets factory mutual requirements for increased fastener density in the corners and the perimeter of the roof. The first half strip is laid out at the bottom edge of the roof. Fasteners are secured 3 and 1 half inches in from the edge and 12 inches apart. 
All fasteners within 6 feet of the roof edge cannot be spaced at intervals greater than 12 inches. The second half strip of the membrane is laid out, with the salvage edge overlapping the first strip by a minimum of 4 and 1 half inches. The two sheets must be pulled tight to keep the edges smooth and free of wrinkles. Fasteners are secured every 12 inches on center. The third and fourth half strips are laid out from the left perimeter. Depending on the roof height and surrounding terrain, additional fasteners may be necessary. When the two half strips have been laid out on each perimeter, full strips of the membrane are then laid out and fastened. Those fasteners not covered by a seam should have fastener covers over them. Once the membrane has been fastened to the roof, the adjacent membrane must be welded to it. For large jobs, it may be beneficial to use an automatic welder. Take note, this does not eliminate the need to roll the seam once it is welded. On mechanically fastened projects, remember to overlap the two membrane sheets a minimum of 4 and 1 half inches when using a 2 inch plate. With the 3 inch plate, the membrane must be overlapped a minimum of 5 and 3 quarter inches. Take note, plan your work so sheets are not exposed for a long period of time. All sheets should be welded the same day they are laid. When encountering penetrations of any kind while rolling the base sheet, simply mark and cut the base sheet, slip the sheet over the penetration if possible, and fasten the membrane to the roof. Unsupported white membrane should be applied to pipes, upstands, and flashing details. This will be covered later in this program. Before seaming, be sure that the Hypalon rubber surface to be seamed is clean and free of contaminants. To clean, wipe the seaming area with xylene solvent. Exposure to sunlight or moisture may have caused the surface to cure. This can adversely affect the quality of the seam weld. Once the area to be seamed has been thoroughly cleaned, apply the Hypalon seaming adhesive to both surfaces. Lap the surfaces together, immediately ensuring a strong seam. The adhesive must be thoroughly wet at this time. Using a welding gun, compress the seam by firmly rolling a hard faced roller perpendicular to the seam. A small amount of adhesive forced out of the edges is alright. This indicates that sufficient adhesive has been applied to the two surfaces. During the seaming procedure, the temperature of the sheet and adhesive when bonding must be above 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Take note. If the current ambient temperature is below 60 degrees, the sheet and the adhesive must be warmed artificially. Again, be sure to weld all sheets on the same day that they are laid, and inspect all welds on completion of the day's work, and at the beginning of the following day. Take note, when encountering previously welded seams, make sure to firmly press your roller along the seam, ensuring a good bond. Upon completion of the weld, Always brush seaming adhesive along the cut edge to seal the exposed scrim. At any T-joint, when the sheet overlays another weld, take a seam probe and penetrate the intersection. Brush in seaming adhesive. While applying heat, roll a narrow roller in the direction of the hole until the surfaces are sufficiently bonded. Finish by brushing seaming adhesive over the weld. Keep in mind that there are several different types of drains that will require slight modification in your application procedure. We will cover the basic elements required in every drain application. First, make sure you place paper or another obstruction of some kind in the opening to prevent debris from falling into the drain. Lay out the base sheet and mark the location of the drain. This would also be a good time to mark the location of the holes for the clamping ring if your drains use this system. Next, cut the opening you've just marked for the drain and the bolt holes for the clamping ring. Trim the excess membrane from the drain opening. In mechanically fastened applications, apply 360S urethane sealant below the main sheet around the top of the drain. Secure the base sheet to the substrate using contact cement or mechanical fasteners located 3 and 1 half inches from the circumference of the drain. 
In fully adhered applications, cut the sheet in pie shaped sections and use a roller to mold the membrane into the drain well. Next, lay out the support sheet and mark the holes for the drain and clamping ring if necessary. Apply the sealant to the top of the support sheet. Weld the support sheet to the base sheet using proper seaming procedure covered in part 3. Remember to wipe both the sheets with xylene prior to seaming. Remember to brush seaming adhesive on all cut edges. With the support sheet in place, secure the clamping ring. Finally, remove the drain plug and replace the drain cover. Cut and trim a piece of unsupported hypolong flashing to a size that will allow a minimum of 8 inches on each side of the stack. During the trimming, round off the corners to ensure a good fit. Then cut a small hole in the sheet. Heat the surface around the opening to make it more pliable and slide over the stack, leaving a minimum 1 inch lip at the bottom. Seam the support sheet to the base sheet using proper seaming procedure covered in part 3. Take a piece of reinforced or unsupported hypolon and wrap the pipe, cutting to a proper size, leaving a 2 inch overlap for proper seaming. Apply seaming adhesive at the base on the 1 inch lip and on the wrapped piece of hypolon. Use seaming adhesive when welding hypolon to hypolon. Use contact adhesive when welding hypolon to other surfaces. Complete by seaming together the 2 inch seam overlap of the pipe wrap. To terminate, either weld the remaining hypolon by folding it down into the pipe at least one inch, or add a stainless steel band clamp at the top of the stack, and apply 360S urethane sealant to the top of the clamp. If using this method, do not apply contact adhesive to the stack. On non-typical vent stacks, additional pieces of hypolon may be needed to seal the protrusion. Cut and trim the pieces necessary to cover the base of the pipe. Seam the surfaces together. Terminate the top by applying 360S urethane sealant to the top of the hypolon, as well as any additional flashing that could be a problem. Take note, always replace any existing components such as stack covers that may have been removed during substrate preparation. Cut a section of PVC pipe with the correct diameter that will wrap the cluster of pipes. Cut a slit in the pipe to allow it to be opened around the penetrations. Apply contact adhesive to the PVC and a piece of the unsupported white membrane, remembering not to apply it to areas to be seamed. Heat the hypolon to make it pliable and fold it back. Snap the pipe around the penetrations. Seam the unsupported membrane to the base sheet using proper seaming procedure covered in part 3. Wrap the hypolon down into the pipe. Use some sort of filler, like a self-leveling sealant, spray foam, which must be coated, or scrap ISO board with 360S urethane sealant to seal the void. A small amount of seaming adhesive may be used to smooth the caulk. When encountering a parapet with high wall, Use the following procedure. First, position a base sheet and secure it in place with fasteners at the recommended spacing. Measure and pre-cut the top sheet. Apply contact adhesive to the parapet wall and the back side of the top sheet. Weld the top sheet to the base sheet using proper seaming procedure covered in part 3. Secure the top of the sheet with a 1 and 1 half termination bar and fasteners. Use a bead of 360S urethane sealant to seal the heads of the fasteners. Complete the procedure by sealing the top edge of the sheet and termination bar with 360S urethane sealant. For inside corner applications, fold the membrane so there isn't a seam or gap directly in the corner. In the corner, utilize a hypolon patch or preformed inside corner to reinforce or strengthen the corner. Weld the patch or preformed corner to the base membrane using proper seaming procedure as covered in part 3. Finally, brush the entire area with seaming adhesive to completely seal the corner. You will not have to use a lot of pressure to seal the seams, 
as long as you have the right amount of seaming adhesive and heat from the welder. For outside corner applications, the base sheet should be cut to fit around the corner. The base of the corner will need additional protection to effectively seal the corner. To accomplish this, cut a handmade patch or use a preformed outside corner. When not using a preformed patch, the edges must be rounded off to ensure a proper seal. Weld the patched or preformed corner to the base sheet utilizing proper seaming procedure. Coat the entire area with seaming adhesive to finish the application. Position the base sheet and secure with adhesive or fasteners. Pre-cut the top sheet and position in place. Weld the top sheet to the substrate with contact adhesive. Mechanically fasten the top sheet on the back side of the curb with the fastener. Next, seal the edge with seaming adhesive. Weld the two sheets together with seaming adhesive. Finally, seal the cut edge with seaming adhesive. If the curbs for the AC unit are not permanent, hoist the unit off the roof enough to roll the membrane beneath it. Contact adhesive may be applied to the membrane and the substrate to prevent slipping. Once the membrane has been rolled, lower the unit and place treated wood blocks with the pad to prevent damage to the membrane. Surface cure occurs when the membrane is exposed to moisture or sunlight for any significant time prior to installation. The membrane itself will appear as a thin coating, which will slough off during contact with xylene. To correct this condition, prior to welding, dip an abrasive pad or stiff bristle brush in xylene. Use it to scrub the membrane surface. Continue scrubbing in this manner until the solvent evaporates. Repeat this step two, three, or four more times until the surface feels slightly tacky. Wipe the area with a solvent saturated, but not dripping, clean cloth. Finally, apply the seaming adhesive as soon as possible, following the seaming procedure previously outlined in this program. Surface cure also comes into play when patching or repairing aged membrane. If the membrane is ripped or torn from mechanical damage, it must be repaired promptly to prevent further damage. In order to patch the area correctly, follow this procedure. First, draw a circle or oval around the torn area of the membrane. Next, cut the circle, making sure the edges are smooth and even. Clean the membrane. If we're using high crown repair roll, soak the area with simple green then scrubbed with an approved pad or brush. When the area feels tacky, it is time to weld on the repair patch. If you are using a standard high crown roll to patch the area, use xylene to clean the membrane. The patch used to fit the repair or oval should be sized to cover the damage completely, with at least three inches of patch membrane extended beyond all sides. If you ever spill xylene on the membrane, do not wipe it up with a cloth. This can damage it. Instead, soak up the xylene with a sponge. The patch should then be welded to the surface. With the repair material, you will only need the heat welder for the application. If you are using Hypalon membrane, you will need to weld the